Yeah, uh, Mitch. Before we before we came on, uh, I was ta- I was talking to you about your great book, uh, The Stranger in the Lifeboat. I, I just think I think it's terrific. Yeah, uh, just on many levels. I mean, the writing is superb, and just the message. I don't want to give it away for those who uh, who haven't read it. No spoilers, but you know, we talk about uh, on this show. We talk about faith uh, very unapologetically. Uh, we, we are both the uh, grandsons of, of pastors, <laughs> of churches, so uh, it's kind of in us. And this whole notion of theodicy, why do, why do good things happen to, uh, why, do, why do bad things happen to good people, you know, that's something that a lot of people who are in faith, who are outside, or are critics of it, talk about. So I'm just wondering, like, there's so many layers to this. What gave you the idea? I mean, there's so, there's so much rich material here. I'm just wondering from a author standpoint, how do you start or what inspired you to start this story? Uh-oh. Guys, I'm so sorry. This connection is, is, is bad and uh, you're freezing up oh. and this is a really important conversation. If you like, I can try to dial you back in or something because I, I don't want to mess up your program. I know you realize that you're getting half answers from me here. Let me uh, see if I can try well, to we, dial well, you we, back in. Well, we, we, can, we can hear you right now. Mike, you want to ask the question again? Oh, you can. can you hear us now? Yeah, Mike, ask no, the question I got, one more time, I, Mike. I, I kind of got, well, I, I got the question. I got the question. Oh, okay. I just, uh, okay. Yeah, we got you. Jumping around. Yeah. Okay, but, we got uh, you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you for thank you for saying what you did about the book. The, the book, I'm holding it here. Um, you know, I also uh, live in a world of sports, uh, but also have to balance, you know, the bigger picture questions. And ever since writing Tuesdays with Maury, that's kind of been my life. You know, I actually have a job as in the sports world, but I write books that are have nothing to do with sports. They have to do with larger questions of life. And I learned that when I was sitting alongside an old professor of mine who was dying from Lou Gehrig's disease and kind of taught me what really does matter in life and what doesn't when you get to the end. And I've been trying to live my life like that ever since. Stranger in the Lifeboat takes this premise of, uh, it's really about help, honestly. It's about asking for help. And uh, I, I tried to think of the most dire situation I could asking for help. So I created this situation out in the middle of the ocean where a luxury yacht blows up and all the rich people who are on it, are, are most of them are killed and only a few of them survive with some of the help. And they get into this life raft, there's 10 of them and it's out there in the water for three days and nobody's coming to help them. There's sharks in the water. They're running out of food and, and drink and they're desperate, they're crying out for help. And, and suddenly they see this body floating in the water and they pull it into the boat. And it's this young guy, kind of nondescript, average looking guy. And uh, they pepper him with questions. He doesn't say anything. And finally, one of the passengers says, well, thank the Lord we found you. And he says, I am the Lord. And hmm. the book takes off from there with them not believing that this guy who he says he is because he doesn't look like they expect, you know, and this is the question of help. When we ask for help, we want it to look and be exactly what we expect it to be. But this guy is, he gets hungry, he gets thirsty, he falls asleep a lot, he, he looks, he's got no muscles, he's just this average looking guy. And they, they mock him and they say, okay, well, if you're God, what are you doing here? And he says, well, haven't you been calling me? You know, I came because you were calling me. And they say, well, so what, you're gonna save us? And he says, I can only save you if everybody in this boat believes I am who I say I am at the same time. And of course, that's a very hard thing to have happen with 10 people from various backgrounds, especially when some of them are very rich and have been used to thinking they're the masters of their own universe. So, uh, you know, I tried to explore that theme uh, in the book. And I think it's something given the last two years, the pandemic, uh, everybody has been asking for help in some way, shape or form, you know, and I just thought it was a timely kind of uh, topic to, you know, because I'm sure you guys have had this happen in your life. Many times we think our prayers aren't answered. Many times I've had that happen. I lost a child, you know, I never, I, at that point I had nothing, wanted nothing to do with faith or religion or anything like that, because how could there be a benevolent force in the universe that wasn't benevolent to a seven-year-old girl? But over time you come to realize as, as one of the passengers in the boat asks this God character, how come you let people die? How come you took my wife? You know, she died. How come you took her? And he says, well, you know, when people die on, on earth, they always ask, the others always ask, why did you take them? 
the better question would be, why did you give them to us? You know, why were, what did we do to deserve all that love, all that, all those great moments, all those memories? And, you know, and he says, I know you cry when your loved ones leave this earth, but I can assure you they're not crying. And, you know, for me, that's how I kind of came to deal with, you know, my, our little girl's death and, and, and all that was that, well, she's not crying where she is. And, and so, you know, that's what I mean by help. Sometimes you look back on something and you say, oh, it was terrible. I didn't get my prayers answered. But now I look back and I say, wait a minute. We got to be, we adopted her late in life. We got to be parents for two phenomenal years. Uh, what do we do to deserve that? You know, uh, mm -hmm. we didn't lose a child. We were given one. And when you look at it that way, and instead of why, why are you taking from me? Why are you taking from me? You realize, you know, there is comfort even when bad things happen. And that's the, we got the help that we needed. We just didn't recognize it at the time. Mike, that, Mitch, yeah. all, all of the, first of all, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm moved. I know you are, Michael. Thank you for that, Mitch. All I know is, uh, interestingly enough, your signal was super solid for that answer. <laughs> that's, that's all I know. <laughs> I, all I know is the, it, it was like there were no glitches just now, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying that because we needed to hear that. We all needed to hear that. Wow. Hey, hey, hey. It's just uh, not, not to give away too much of the book, but it's just like that part in the book where they say, man, we really need rain. And the Lord character just closed his eyes and looked up, and the storm came. And one of the characters asked, hey, did you, did you bring the storm? And he, he said, do you think I did? Yeah, you know, so yeah. You can, we can go back. <laughs> Do you think I did? Uh, you got what right. you needed. Yeah. Hey, hey, did you think I did it? Do you think I did it or not? I'm gonna, I mean, I'll, I'll I leave am, it with this. I imagine God is powerful enough to control internet signal. So uh, you know, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. I, Maybe he's I'll leave it with this, uh, Mitch. Uh, Michael Wilbon once said to me, uh, yeah, I mean, years ago, he said, "Look, he said Mitch, Mitch has it figured. He has stuff figured out." that we haven't thought of yet. He really did. It's a real conversation. I think we were at Augusta and he said something. You had, you had mentioned some branding issue to him, name and licensing something. It was a long time ago. And he said, Mitch came to me and asked me about this thing. I never heard of it, but Mitch has. He said, Mitch has it figured mm -hmm. out. I'm going to push that forward and say, number one, New York Times bestsellers. I mean, I, a lot of people can say, yeah, I've been on the New York Times bestsellers list, but to be on there multiple times, do you ever step back and say, what did I do to deserve this? Because that's an incredible accomplishment. I say that all the time. Uh, I say that every day, but not, not just for having a book in the number one bestsellers list. Um, more for, you know, my wife, uh, my, my, my health, family. Um, I operate an orphanage in Haiti uh, that I'm at every month for the last 12 years. And those kids are the joys of my life. And uh, we have 53 children that we are raising there. And, uh, you know, that was another one of those cases where I went down to Haiti. I'd never been to Haiti before, never had any idea what Haiti was about. And uh, within a few months, I had taken over this orphanage because the guy who had been running it was old and he couldn't do it anymore. And I kind of stupidly said, well, I, I could probably do it. And he said, well, thank, thank you here, you know. and. Uh, I, at the time, I thought, oh, my God, what did I just get myself into? But I, now, 12 years later, I look at it as like, th these are the kids that I you know, never had. And this is the family that we've been waiting for our whole lives. And, and so I say all the time, why me? And why that happened? But, you know, you guys are, are blessed, too. You know, and, 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 Michael, I know you a little bit better. But, but you've had great things happen to you in the course of your career. But you've, you have reacted with it by saying, OK, so I've been blessed. Yeah, you say, why me? And the answer sometimes is because you can do something with it. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget, Ma Maury said to me once, what do you do for your community? This when I was sitting alongside Maury as he was dying. And he said, what do you do for your community? What do you do for other people? I, I said, what do you mean? He said, you know, charities, things like that. I said, oh, I, I write checks. And he said, well, anybody can write a check, but you've been given a voice, and you need to use that voice for something other than aggrandizing yourself. Um, I always remember that because who uses the word aggrandize in a sentence, you know, <laughs> so probably the first, <laughs> first and only time I've ever heard it used. But um, he was right. You know, I was blessed with this ability to tell stories. You know, it's about the only talent I have, but I have that talent. And so use it. 
you know, and, and that's the answer to the question, why you, you know, because you got to do something with it. And there's a moment in the book, again, we won't give it away, but there's a moment in the book where uh, one of the characters says, what am I supposed to do with this blessing, so to speak? And the answer is find somebody else who's in despair and help them. And, uh, you know, I think that's the, that's the reason, that's what we're supposed to do with good things. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do anyhow. Mitch album. Uh, it's amazing. As wow. Michael Smith said, it's amazing how uh, things just kind of cleared up. When we oh, start, my, when we start talking about the Detroit Lions, how about that? We stopped <laughs> talking about the Detroit Lions and everything got better. Yeah. But this is it. This is the next uh, number one. If it's not there already, it'll be there. Uh, the no, uh, number one New York Times bestseller yeah. for Mitch album. Uh, the stranger in the Thank light. Thank you club. for sending it to Thank us. We you. appreciate it. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.